hear the fanfares. It's the second coming of Eric Cantona. An extraordinary event, overshadowing a fixture that always stands in its own right. But up to this point, secondary to this sighting. He says he's returning a better player, maybe a wiser person. He's certainly very fit, very focused. Private agonies, I'm sure, public scrutiny now. But Eric Cantona is very much among friends today. At the end of January, many believed that Cantona would never play in England again. He does, against none other than Liverpool, Manchester United's greatest rivals. And you will see it live on Sky Sports after the break. What an afternoon this is developing into. Match commentators at Old Trafford, Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Well, all football lovers will be pleased to see him back. Few can match his magnetism. Controlling the ball, not a problem. Controlling himself, well, it's vital now. Controlling the game is David Ellery, a high-profile referee appointed by the Premier League. No one wants or expects special favours for the Frenchman. Just a fair deal, like every player on the pitch. Well, Andy Cole and Eric Cantona back in tandem. One poor game here against Blackburn in January when Cantona got his last goal for United. And, of course, the roof fell in at Crystal Palace. Just looking quickly at Manchester United's midfield area. The quartet, it looks as though Nicky Butt's going to play furthest right of the four. And Lee Sharp in the centre with Roy Keane. Left to centre, Keane right to centre. Philip Neville. Ryan Giggs very much on the left to start with. Well, no one's been talking about a European exit at Manchester United today. It's perhaps the perfect way for Alec Ferguson to get his players back on track. But there's a big job to be done here. United have won only one of their last five games over the same stretch. Four wins and a draw for Liverpool. And they've had to make the alterations today for a whole variety of reasons. Cole found by Butt. Here's Cal Incredible afternoon. And sure enough, he's got to be involved right at the heart of it. Liverpool contribute. They lost possession of the ball easily in midfield. But he finds space. Look at Cantona. Two great touches. Whether he didn't quite get the control. But the way it sat up for him was important because it lifts into the space. And his second touch is absolutely perfect. What a start for the home side. It's taken a little over a minute for a major, major impact for Manchester United in this match, for Eric Cantona in his comeback. And the scorer is Nicky Butt. Well, it's amazing, you know, we talk about a man's brain. Whether he saw him, but Jason McAteer played the ball inside, Matt, and bombed on. Left Steve McManaman with the ball. He lost it, and Eric just drifted into the space that McAteer had left. Sure enough, he was found. Nicky Butt did the rest. And Alec Ferguson, I think, summed it up. Phew, he seemed to be going when we looked at him then. Cantona leapt into the air as the ball flew into the net. A flying start. No Liverpool supporters here officially with the ground rebuilding going on. So it's as near as you get to a controlled environment, really, for a Premiership game. Pallister. That's Babs' tackle. Phil Babb, who made his debut in this fixture last season for Liverpool. He lost 2-0 then, 1-0 the year before. So goals have been few and far between. In recent visits, they need a goal now. 
Well, in games of this magnitude, an early goal is just something as a, as a viewer you would want. You don't often get, but sometimes when you do, it just turns a very special occasion into something spectacular. Let's hope that's the case this afternoon. Phil Neville. Over the top of McAteer, John Scales thrust back into the side today. Sharp. The younger Neville. Diggs. Well, bad, it bounced off Ruddock. James able to treat that with his hands. Balloons on the pitch. Well, the balloon has well and truly gone up here with the way Manchester United have started. Liverpool's consolation at the moment is there's plenty of time for recovery. It hasn't been quite the same Manchester United this season defensively. Cole. But outside him, it's Nick Butt again. Ruddock is the defender, James the goalkeeper. Comes Liverpool's way. With a little bit more pace on the pass to Butt, and he wouldn't have needed to have even thought about taking it around Neil Ruddock. But just a lack of pace. It gave Ruddock a chance to get back. Super ball from Gary Neville, he swept up 40 yards ahead to Andy Cole, straight on his chest. One of his pile drivers from long range, and Liverpool certainly have been encouraging him to shoot from distance, and Schmeichel wasn't sure exactly where that was going to end up. Well, I'll always say, when someone hits from distance, you can always tell how the goalkeeper's worried by the way he either stands and casually watches it go wide, or whether he does this and he's scrambling across his goal. He's worried about this, Peter Schmeichel. Really worried, it's only just gone wide. Diggs was pulling at McManaman. Scales with a free kick. Steve Harkness has been doing a useful job in the Liverpool ranks this season. On the left-hand side, in preference to Steve Bjernaby, who's fit again now. Michael, an accomplished outfield player, as we saw on Tuesday. Sharp applying the pressure, it bounces out off him. I know we've talked a lot since Tuesday about going out of Europe and how disappointed they must have been. But you and I were here and we saw a very, very good Manchester United performance for 45 minutes, Martin. It wasn't a performance that lacked confidence, that lacked spirit, that lacked anything. Now you'd put Eric Cantor on top of that and you know, I think Fergie would have been looking forward to this game today. They had the perfect start. Well, they have been less assured defensively, and that showed in the opening 25 minutes against Rota Volgograd. Cantona's comeback might indirectly inject confidence throughout the team and help even the lads at the back. He's certainly helping those up the front. Cole not giving Ruddock the right to let the ball run out. Cantona, control was great. Liverpool swarming around Sharp. McManaman. But. Well, Nicky Butt had gone on, hoping that Cole could squeeze it back to him. Brought out by Fowler. Didn't get very far. Didn't get a free kick either. Giggs. Cantona happy to find some space on the left-hand side again, although it wasn't too much for him, it was enough to threaten Jason McAteer. That wasn't the movement of a rusty footballer. That was the movement of someone who looked sharp, was keen to get involved. 
Well, Andy, you and I have been hearing reports on the grapevine about these matches behind closed doors, where Eric Cantona has been very special. That's the reason he's playing that. He's had enough football behind closed doors for Alex Ferguson to have no doubts at all about sticking him straight back. Long from Neville. Off the head of Scales. Thomas just beating sharp for the right for the second ball. Phil Neville. Thomas there again. Comes off Cantona. Rush. Launched this time by McAteer. Neville kept his eye on it well. Wind likely to play a part. And he stayed it back very capably. Was flagging. That's unlucky. That was a super run from Giggs. It pulled Jason McAteer towards Philip Neville and then just pulled in behind him into the space. The ball was only fractionally long. But it gives us a chance to have a look again. McAteer's gone forward. He's ahead of play. Cantona just drifts in. Has a look. Looking about. Looking. Not playing it aimlessly. But his first touch sits up. Past Thomas. Great stretch and great finish. Happy? <laughs> He's happy. Fowler. Four goals for his name last weekend, of course. Maketeer starting a Premier game in Liverpool Colours for the first time. He came on as a substitute against Blackburn in the League Cup against Sunderland. Cantona trying one of those little flicks that have become his trademark. McManaman. Now Redknapp. Free kick given to Liverpool against Sharp. That was a late tackle. At the end, it would have been unnecessary. I think Jamie Redknapp had overran the ball. He plays it away there, and then the tackle comes in. And fancy Redknapp and Ruddock. Well, we'll have a look at this. Well, Jamie Redknapp, of course, scored famously against Blackburn on the last day of last season from that sort of position, but. That's the problem when you've done it before. Goalkeepers do their homework and Schmeichel got what he expected. Comfortable. It's set for the right foot, it's set for that corner. Goalkeeper goes, wanders over, a couple of strides, it's a comfortable catch. Redner, Fowler making the run. Schmeichel impetuously started to come out as if he's been caught up in what's going on here. Philip Neville. Cole wants it to feed, gets it. Support from Keane. Gary Neville available on the right-hand side. Fowler trying to get back. Ruddock. Powerfully away. Pallister trying to keep Liverpool pushed back. Cantona, it's another terrific ball for Butt. Great vision, his vision is so good. When he needs two and three touches, he'll take them. But the mark of a really great player is when he needs only one. You talk about seeing a picture around you, look at that. He knows he's only needs one touch. But makes another super run. And James does what he has to do. Digs with the corner. That's off the head of Scales. Goalkeeper trying to get there. Against Palace Day has done. But so much has been said about Cantona. Liverpool have had to read all the words in print all week. And yet they can't find him out on the pitch. At the moment he's getting room and Roy Evans is concerned. Well, he's not getting room. He just, you know what he's like. He just wanders into it. He's very unless you man for man mark him. It's, it's well nigh impossible then to stop him finding the ball. moment he's the furthest forward 
watched by Ruddock, who of course famously felt his collar here in this fixture last season. An incident that threatened to get out of hand. Cole. Runs on to James. McManaman with freedom to work on both flanks from what we've seen so far. Harkness. Foul. Here's Redknapp. Mankatea, the Liverpool fanatic, who's now become a Liverpool footballer. There's a good ball on to Harkness. A longer one from Redknapp. They tried to feed a little ball into Ian Rush. Steve Hartness had sneaked up on the far side and was in quite a lot of space. And that's what Liverpool are trying to do now. They're trying to put some passes together, trying to compose himself. Got that good pass and move, pass and move game. It's been the trademark this season. Cole's head straight to Cantona. Hartness pressed by Butt. Two of the youngsters have lost their place. Manchester United. Like David Beckham and Paul Scholes, but Nicky Buff has certainly put himself in the fray to stay in the side. And emphasise that point with the opening goal. Couldn't have come at a better time, I don't think, with the turnover, the fitness of people like Keane and Cole and Cantona. It gives him a chance, Alex, to, to rest the Beckhams and the scolders of this world, because he will need them as the season goes on, but I don't think we'd like to have played a whole season with them all on the side. That might have been too much for them, the young players. Robert, dummy in so that the ball would run through. <laughs> Thomas taking too long. Gary Neville, who was injured in Russia. Managed the thigh, it's his first game back since then. Lucky straighter ball there. Nicky but the idea was good, a couple of short passes, little in the change, and then just tried to lengthen it for Andy Cole. But attracted infield, leaving some space for Harkness. At Manaman, Harkness is there again. Fowler and Rush in the centre. Going by Jason McAteer. Here is McAteer. Thomas. Cantona dispossesses Redner to huge cheers. Well, everyone wondered how ready Eric would be. You've had your answer. In no sign of the game passing him by. Alec Ferguson did say that there's another game on Tuesday and he might have to uh, possibly be on the bench for that one at York a lot to do for Manchester United but two games in three days does test the match fitness or lack of it left side is a profitable one for Liverpool so far and that they can get Hartless released quite high up the pitch I think for two reasons one that Nicky Butt is, is tucked in a little when they're defending and I also think the back four are very conscious of Russian fowlers lovely little diagonal runs that they make in between defenders the full backs are tucked in a bit narrow when Liverpool come forward and therefore I think that they'll be looking to get Hartless on the ball as much as possible Thomas the avenue is there to the left again here is Harkness. And he's got a little bit of room coming in field. And the Liverpool players regarded that as rather a wasteful attempt. Robbie Fowler in particular wanted the ball rolled into his feet. We talked about the little runs that they make, and that was a great example. Harkness came through. And watch Fowler. He makes a darting little run in there. 
in between defenders behind Steve Bruce. He wants the ball released. But it doesn't come. Hartness, fresh from that wonderful strike, was it last weekend? Against Bolton? Bolton yes. Decided to try his luck again. that mark both yep. tucked in you get him well up all oh, halfway line in the head as he gets possession comfortable possession and that ain't a bad start that's not a bad starting point to have it's not really in Mickey Butt's nature to play close to the touchline in midfield it's very central again but United had the ball they have a throw I think that's something if Hartless does get a lot of joy and a lot of the ball. They, may, they might look to change gigs, push him wide right, and then bring Sharp this left-hand side. It'll be more natural for both of them. Fowler. There's the outlet again. Hammond goes wide. Little Paul showing signs of having got over the shock with that sensational start for Manchester United. There's no offside, Cantona's ball, and Cole, once or twice, gave it up. Had he gone hell for leather right from the start, he might just have got there, but when you're recently back from a damaged hamstring... Well, that's probably the easiest ball Eric Cantona has to play in this match. Under no pressure, really acres to lay it into. I fully expected the Frenchman just to roll it into Cole's path and say, go on. Neil Ruddock had stopped, he looked to play Andy Cole offside, he didn't get him. And had the ball been played right, well, Cole was right through. And it didn't come off for Cantona there. Well, there were two United players looking favourites to feed onto the flick. Redner, it's all to the left for Liverpool at the moment. McManaman. Thomas. McManaman. Liverpool given an advantage, I think there was a foul by Bruce. Redknapp. Thomas. He knows a thing or two about getting goals from midfield. Concentrating on keeping the shot down. Sent it straight at Schmeichel. But Liverpool guilty perhaps of a bit of overconfidence, overcommitting players forward. There was space suddenly for United to utilise. no time looking for Cole and good spell for Liverpool bad, bad typical of the way it's gone for Roy Evans team over the last 10 minutes or so Thomas is in Fowler on his good side good spell passing they've got the passing together now they've got it working and the one thing they haven't found at the moment is just that finishing touch just dwelling on it a little bit, you need a little bit sloppy. And Thomas just pounces. Fancy that we hit the target. Left side, confident side, natural side. Just got underneath it. Well, they've been making a, a record for charity this week, Liverpool. I and mean, there is something of the, uh, the pop star image around the club at the moment. This is Cole, block from Ruddock. Fowler. He's beaten Bruce. Rush coming in. Well, that no. deserved the goal. That deserved the goal. That was beautiful football from Liverpool. A great play from Fowler, who gets released. Skin Steve Bruce. Now watch the way he looks up. Rushes Steven in. The goalkeeper doesn't get on it. Hits him in the shin. It goes wide. Really fancied Ian Rush here. It's a beautiful ball in from his strike partner. Just weighted in so perfectly. No great pace on it. Ian Rush will be disappointed. 
just wonder if it slightly brushed Michael's May fingers. well have done. And if it does, that any sort of touch can put off the on-rushing player. It was rush. Certainly the goalkeeper was the distraction, but it was as near as Liverpool have come. And it's in keeping with the way they've been playing over the last 15 minutes. Manchester United have a lot more to do here, you feel, after being given the perfect start. McAteer. in the Premiership here last season remember only four goals conceded in the league program at Old Trafford only one of those to a forward who's actually on the Liverpool bench today it's Dan Collymore then of Nottingham Forest West Ham has scored here this season, though they lost. Wimbledon have scored, though they lost. York, of course, got three. Rota Volgograd, two. Liverpool looking like they might get one, at least. And not like that. Great strength for you, from the two. Well, it gives you another chance. Run it through the computer a little. And we see Cantona and Butt in the picture. And the way he looks up, just pulls the ball back to the edge of the box. Such is there. Super goal. Did he enjoy it? He did. The arms are up from the Frenchman. And now from the goal scorer, but this time to call for the ball from the goal kick. Harkness, who's had a lot of the ball. Say in a more containing position that time, he stayed wide as well, which puts him in possession. Well, it's not a big surprise, Liverpool having more of the ball. Key. Giggs. Cole. Sharp. Making sure that Ruddock had to play it. Otherwise, Liverpool were in danger of going two adrift. McManaman. But slipped. Oh, and it's bounced off Bruce Fowler. Goes down. Liverpool turn to David Ellery. No penalty in the mind of the referee. And no visiting fans here to make that point on behalf of the players. Well, that looked a really clumsy tackle from here from Steve Bruce. I don't think Robbie Furlow's going over here without any contact. You're a striker and you're ahead of the centre-back. The last thing you're going to do with the ball at your feet is go over. There's no contact. It's certainly one that we can have a look at. But Fowler was absolutely furious. Chased after David Ellery. Redknapp. Here's Fowler again. Ball played. Undeniably that time by Pallister. Cantona. Trying to link up down the United left. Fowler. McManaman. Liverpool pulling the strings at the moment. Fowler. Not dwelling on the disappointment, but a definite disappointment it was for Liverpool. They believe they should have had a penalty. Well, look at this will give us a better idea. The ball's played in and Steve Bruce doesn't deal with it. Fowler's through. Well, that's a clumsy tackle if nothing else. There's a lot of arms and legs. David Ellery, in all fairness to him, had a good position to see it. Bam. 
McManaman. Now Thomas. He played in front of Manchester United at the moment. And Steve Bruce very relieved because it was a lapse in control that could have been very costly. Bruce, Thomas. No one left side this time. Now Liverpool are absolutely dominating possession in this game at the moment. They're controlling the pace and tempo of the game. Manchester United just back on the edge of their box. I know Brian Kidd's on at the edge of the, the pitch there. He's telling his players, trying to get them to go and put pressure on, get some tackles in. He seems to be indicating to me. Because the way Liverpool are just stroking the ball about at the moment, well, it must be giving them some cause for concern. Well, that's a bad decision. Didn't look a good decision at all, that. I think it's concerned that they've just backed off to the edge of the 18-yard box. Hartness. Redknapp. in possession Liverpool it's developing their attempts at goal as well but the one on target for Manchester United is the one that matters and Andy Cole oh, if he'd realised where the ball was it might have been a, another one on target uh, they gave Baba Fright there suddenly injected a little bit of pace Andy Cole and well, had he lost it, had he not lost it when it went up in the air, he'd be right, been in right trouble. <laughs> Longer ball from Bab, easy for Pallister, Redknapp. Dix tucking back deeply. Gales coming forward for Liverpool. Thomas. McManaman. Liverpool certainly not phased for long about losing an early goal. And Manchester United finding it heavy going in midfield. Where Redknapp and Thomas and McManaman are doing so well, supported down the sides by McAteer and Harkness. again and that's left some space for Gary Neville when United had the ball they haven't had much of it recently but it's with Cantona now and you can sense the extra anticipation the pass is a good one again to Butt it's Lee Sharp now that's a guilt edge chance they don't come much better than that in games like this and he knows it that could be a big big opportunity the breakaway Cantona again such great vision this is good football from Giggs he just lets it run he knows Sharp's there no, it's not his strongest side, he's right. But he'll feel he should have scored there. Certainly his manager did. Fowler. Rush in the centre. Fowler didn't need him. He rammed it in. Well, Peter Schmeichel's often accused his, his defenders when they don't press people. But I've got to fault the goalkeeper here. I think he's taken completely by surprise. I don't know whether Ian Rush is running in the centre. Attracts his attention. But he hits it from there. It goes straight above a goalkeeper who's six foot three on his near post. He shouldn't be beaten there, in my opinion, right above his head. He's back on his backside. It's a great shot with plenty of power. But I think Robbie Fowler would hit that against Schmeichel 19 times out of 20 and not score. And it happened seconds after Lee Sharp could have put Manchester United 2 0 in front. It is 1 1 with 33 minutes gone. But that's been a profitable side, Martin, isn't it? The right side, the left side, the inside left, outside left channel of Liverpool's. Down the right side of Manchester United, it's where they've enjoyed a lot of possession. 
a lot of possession in advanced areas. Now we've got a smashing game on. Redknapp. Reward for Liverpool. They reacted so well to that early shot. saw how disappointed Alec Ferguson was when Sharp failed to score. Goodness knows what his disappointment levels reached when seconds later Robbie Fowler put that rasp past Michael. A key episode in the destiny of this match that has attracted attention all around the world. Here. Asked the linesman whether it was a handball then as it deflected off Phil Neville. It might well have been, but Neville could do nothing about it. Drove it out from about a yard away. Cole. John Scales, who uh, was culpable here in last season's fixture with a misplaced back pass. An attempted header then, but Andre Kanchowskis nipped in seized on to score the crucial first goal of that game. Phil Neville. McManaman staying with him, but United had a corner. flag up it must have gone out of play before uh, coming on the swing back into the goalkeeper's arms yeah Robbie Fowler the man who's brought the size there and look at the goalkeeper's position he can't possibly score there look at that again is he attracted by Rush's run I think he must have been and that's well Roy would certainly enjoy that no doubts there but I think one or two question marks over the great day in there. On a day when he's received an award. As a top, the top European goalkeeper. <laughs> Phil Neville. Anton Aaron Keane disputing. In possession then to United. Sharp. Antonov trying to take it from him, but Lee Sharp wasn't in total control and it went wrong for Manchester United. Antonov was arm raised, calling for it again, trying to win the header against Scales. The challenge was enough for the ball to drop for Giggs. But. sun in his eyes a little slow to react rush was certainly off and running i think he felt that ian rush used his arm didn't he he was certainly having a pop at david ellery there but, I mean, just get on with it you've got the ball in your hands no need for the referee to give a free kick stop the game Cole, captain house cushion header 
but he seems more than anyone to uh, have taken up the telepathy with the Frenchman. <laughs> well, Ian Rush and Steve Bruce have been playing against each other for years, right back to the days when it was Chester against Gillingham, and they're still going strong. And on that occasion, it was a free kick against the Liverpool captain, in favour of the Manchester United captain. Kicks. But at the back post. Teasing for us from Giggs. Well, Keane says he got the ball. And Roy Keane and David Ellery, of course, have seen plenty of each other earlier this season when Ellery sent Keane off at Blackburn. He's shown him a yellow card here. Andy. Yeah, I don't think that David Ellery will be in uh, Roy Keane's Christmas list. Comes in at the back of Robbie Fowler, it's, yeah, it's a tap more than anything, whether it's worthy of a booking. Ah, well, I wouldn't like to say it, but... Knocked away by Bruce. Up there for support Cantona again. Oh, the United fans... howling. Oh, a free kick there. The game goes on with United still on the ball. McManaman. Harkness is there on the left again. McManaman keeps it short to Redknapp. Rush showing again the value of not being static in the centre. He was on his toes. The ball not quite delivered where he wanted it. Danny McAllister was talking about the midfield area before the game. And I think that's the area where Liverpool are absolutely dominant at the moment. Thomas Redknapp and McManaman in particular. I think that's probably why Butts tucked in. They're worried about the three in the centre of midfield. Because they're controlling the game, those three players at the moment. to shuffle his back today and of course all the players coming in are internationals either present or past that's the way it always used to be at Liverpool and no wonder for those who tip them strongly for the title this season which they haven't won since 1990 The sheer emotion of today could have taken its toll on the many opponents. It certainly hasn't done on Liverpool. Cantona. With Ruddock, that was one to keep an eye on. There are no sparks flying. Cole. Sharp for Andy Cole. Thomas and Ruddock getting close to each other. The ball bounced up. Yells from the crowd for handball. David Ellery pats his chest. Well, Manchester United started the half so splendidly, looking to finish it the same way. And that struck counted off from Gary Neville. But. Manchester United are finishing the first half very well, enjoying good possession. But Liverpool under pressure. This game's just swinging one way than the other. They can almost play that ball without looking now. And it 
be very risky for Manchester United to just accept it and say, well, we'll kick it off further forward. Redknapp. Now McAteer. Fowler for company. McManaman is herring into the middle. Fowler had spotted it. Purposeful run from Roy Keane. An inviting ball for Dix. Nicely executed. Dix trying to take on Thomas. There's Bab. Where Liverpool wanted him. But. Well, certainly United reasserting themselves after being on the back foot for a good 20-minute spell and losing their lead in the process. Ball for you from the FA Carling Premiership. Southampton and West Ham both in need of points at the foot of the table, down at the foot of the country. And up in Scotland, Rangers, after their terrific win in the Old Firm game at the weekend, at home to Motherwell. That's Tuesday night for you. Non stop football action on Sky Sports. Non stop action in the first half here at Old Trafford fueled by an instant start from Manchester United. And what has been so fascinating, the way Liverpool have fought back to emphasise what they're made of this season. On a day when Newcastle have already beaten Everton by three goals to one. Bruce making sure it didn't get to Ruddock straight away. Half time at Old Trafford. Well, the hoo ha about Cantona not misplaced because he came back and 67 seconds into the game on our watches set up Nicky Butt for a marvellous start for Manchester United. But since then, Liverpool have shown great fighting spirit, plenty of character of their own. Robbie Fowler with a terrific equaliser. Got well, some bad news for Manchester United in that Nicky Butt has had to stay in the dressing room with a calf strain after an excellent first half from him. David Beckham, though, gets another opportunity to show the polish in his play. And well, he is more naturally right-sided. It's a definite change, Martin, in Manchester United's lineup. They look as if they're lining up with three centre-backs. They're going to go like for like with formation. Gary Neville and Pallister and Bruce are all lined up in the centre of the field. Looks like Steve Bruce is going to play as a spare man or try and play as a spare man. Two fullbacks, Lee Sharp wide left now. And Philip Neville in the well right sided area. Well, it's a big change and it's a big compliment to Liverpool. It's a huge compliment to the away side. Here's Scales. It's got to work though. If it's something you're not used to, this is a big, big decision from Alex Ferguson to do it in such an important game. Am I right in thinking they started at Aston Villa with three at the back and didn't have a very good half on the opening day of the season? I think the result told it all that day, didn't it? Yeah. But Gary Neville is comfortable playing more centrally. So, Alec Ferguson has decided drastic remedy, really. It is 1-1, but the uh, sumptuous start wasn't carried on in the same vein. There is a danger with three central defenders that one can lead the ball to another. And responsibility is not taken, but Bruce and Gary Neville just sorted that out. And a nick of time against Fowler. And Fowler has got a goal against Manchester United a lot quicker than Ian Rush did. Remember <laughs> that old chestnut. 23 for Ian. Five for the young rascal, as perhaps we should call him at the moment. He's been getting a little bit of the wrong sort of 
publicity. But has been speaking about his need to show some maturity. He's certainly mature enough on the pitch. drawn in the second half and it won't be one suspect so easy for Liverpool to get Steve Harkness away down the left hand side Antonas cross and Cole wasn't too far away from it I think Phil Bad would have had a flea in his ear from his manager had anything come of that looked to be going nowhere Eric Cantona Wrapped his foot round it and swung in a great ball. McManaman. Keane just there ahead of him. McManaman kept it in. This is McAteer. And the anxiety quite apparent in the crowd's reaction. Turns away again, and Liverpool once more get nothing. Roy Keane colliding in the mind of the referee with Steve McManaman. Well, again, he's looking right at it. Great movement from Liverpool. Look at Fowler's touch, and Keane's the last man. Wow, well, it's, again, it's clumsy more than anything. I thought that's the right decision. I didn't think it was as strong as certainly Robbie Fowler's in the first half but McManaman was wrong side of Roy Keane from Manchester United's perspective for a fraction of a second. Just David Ellery, incidentally, Andy, sorry to just cut across you, has told us at half-time that he had a good view of that incident in the first half, and he said he thought it was 50-50. And Fowler was doing some holding as well. <laughs> He's never been ahead of a centre-back goal with a goal in front of you. Just, just wonder, reporting what yeah, the referee just, has told I just us. wondered though, Martin, looking at the Steve McManaman incident with uh, Roy Keane. Was it Mr. Ellery, the referee, who sent off Roy Keane for going in and accusing him of diving and looking for a penalty? It's just as well Steve McManaman wasn't uh, thought of in that light as he went in with Roy Keane there. Yes, it was a second booking for Keane, so presumably yeah. it would have been a first booking for McManaman had it been seen that way, but plenty to talk about. Did we ever expect anything else today? Oh, when these two play, there always is. Cantona having miscontrolled, making things happen with his own persistence. Trying to thread it through for Beckham. Philip, that is, going to Gary, but a brotherly into passing. McManaman squirts away off the foot of Fowler. Cole. Manchester United with the external advantages, playing at home, the entire support, all fully focused on Cantona's comeback. Liverpool's strong suit has been the way that they've coped with the occasion with a flow to their football that hasn't been as evident in long spells from the home side still some tinkering with the tactics to be done by the Manchester United manager He and Gary Neville were in the uh, England youth setup, of course, together. So many of that UEFA under-18 tournament successful side now 
conspicuous figures in the Premiership. Hartness drills it in, no deflection, goal kick. Well, it gives us an opportunity, Martin, to have a look at uh, the McManaman incident as they go in. And it's more of a clash than anything. I think he thought about it, Roy, didn't he? You saw the right hand come across the chest of McManaman, and then he pulled it away as he felt, I'm sure, Steve McManaman go down. Boots hoisting it long. Follow the ball by the head of Bab. The Beckham, no McManaman, the show where the ball dropped Beckham is the quicker to react Thomas with a killer pass and Fowler with what could be a killer goal for Liverpool well Gary Neville is, was at the referee but I just think he lost out in a battle of strength initially you watch how determined Fowler is to make this his this is a 50-50 this is a battling ball look at Fowler get off this is mine he says and talk about composure in a young head and young shoulders. Goodness me, look at the way he drags it onto his right foot. And has the awareness to say to a great goalkeeper, this is past you, this is in the net, without even thinking. How to silence Old Trafford, the Robbie Fowler way. Four last weekend for Liverpool from Fowler, two here today. And Manchester United are trailing. And at the moment, that flying start counts for nothing. What a finish, though. Just thinking about it. Oh, goodness me. Pallister is in there. And Cantona. A solid frame of Neil Ruddock for Liverpool. Redknapp, there's a runner to the right-hand side, it's Steve McManaman. Liverpool swarming forward. McManaman past Bruce, great recovery from Giggs, but McAteer to keep the pressure on. Manchester United love to play on the break. And they can do now with Cantona. For Andy Cole is offside. He's looking right along the line. Neil Roddick will be happy. It was a pretty poor header from him. He just dropped it down in front of him. See, he, I think he's making it easier. He couldn't see it. Up. There was nothing. But he just dropped it down Derek Cantona. Look at Andy Cole. Shouldn't really be getting caught offside. He's looking at it, looking along the line, looking along the line. You know, it's just lack of thought there, lack of concentration. Well, he was looking at Cantona, wasn't he, instead of along the line. And uh, we're all looking at him today. <laughs> But Cole should have known better in those circumstances. Well, you just feel that Manchester United have got to try and inject a bit of pace. I just think when the Liverpool are possession, they're happy to drop off, or they've been happy to drop off. I think it 2-1 down now. The back have got to push them up. Steve Bruce and Gary Pallas have got to say, we've got to hold a line higher up the pitch. We might have to risk Fowler running in behind us as he did. But we need to get in contact with him a little bit earlier up the pitch and put them under a bit more pressure. Redknapp giving it away for Beckham, poor forward for United. Still Beckham, not quite. Ruddock sorted that, needed to do so. Look at the gap there, Mark, as, as Ruddock won the ball, and he's just played it down to Michael Thomas. It was about 20, 25 yards between Beckham and the nearest red shirt again. Diggs. Now Keane. Cantona by the far post, Cole in the middle of the goal. That's the keepers, especially one as big as David James. Cole was in a good position. Now, James has got the cap on, something Schmeichel spurned in the first half, which was a surprise. Look at Andy Cole, he's got a really good position near post. Still no one comes to him. Don't know whether Roy Keane's trying to bend it in there. Here. It's strong and Manchester United need that strength to be transferred throughout the team at the moment. 
Well, it's just not happening for them at the moment. It's a word of praise for Michael Thomas and that pass. Thomas, who uh, was only called in right on into the Liverpool team when John Barnes, because of uh, family problems, felt he couldn't do justice to playing today. But what a ball it was for Fowler. Thomas has had a role in the uh, European campaign when Roy Evans has dispensed with one of his strikers for an extra midfield man. Thomas has been that extra body in the centre of the park. Fowler. Bruce. Giggs. There's been a glow about his play over the last month or so. After uh, some disappointing times last season. I've looked up there, no Mark, when Giggs was possession, and Manchester United four against one at the back. Redknapp. And I think that's a compliment to the way they feel about this Liverpool side. They really do look like a side high in confidence, high in belief in what the manager is telling them to do. Well, they look like what you expect a Liverpool side to be, and I can give them no higher praise than yeah. that. I wouldn't argue with that. Oh, and Schmeichel was fortunate there with a scuff kick. But there's still more than half an hour to go. Keane. Cantona staying well forward, parallel to Cole. Philip Neville. Bruce, Cantona for Giggs, nicely angled. Fowler for McAteer, there's another ball on for McManaman. Cohesive football from Liverpool again. Power on a hat-trick, pairing into the middle. McAteer is clearly going for goal. Oh. And one or two Manchester United players switched off for a second there. Now, the game's so stretched at the moment. Well, it's great to watch. Well, it could have been a day when the uh, pre-match hype overtook the actual event. It hasn't been like that right from the very start. It is. Manchester United v Liverpool and another chapter in a splendid saga at the moment the more encouraging signs are that it will be a happy ending this time for Liverpool but you can't be sure of that they've won only once in their last 11 visits here and the player who got the goals then John Barnes absent today Cantona. And just sometimes you look for an absent friend, Andre Kanchelskis, and the way they like to counter-attack and dig so before the Cantona suspension. Beckham. I just think it, they're so unused to playing with this system. Lee Sharp was in a lovely position there. And it would have been a, it was a simple ball for Beckham just to keep it going from right to left and get Sharp in good possession. And I don't think he's been used enough second half. He's been in that left wing back, whatever you want to call it, but that advanced left-sided area. And he really hasn't been on the ball enough for Manchester United. Michael's kick has gone straight to McAteer. Nudge infield to McManaman. Thomas. Fowler in too much of a hurry at that time. Over straight to Key. 
Beckham, but Mark was tackled into him. It's broke for Cantona, swept back to Beckham beautifully. And Cantona, a sight of goal, claims a corner. Well, a first slight chance. Well, it's good play for Beckham, it's a good run from Cantona. He plays the ball off, and then he disappears. And then he just starts in here. In through the gap, steadies himself, gets plenty of time, strikes it well enough, but it's always curling away. But look at that, there's the battle of strength, both of them looking to push each other off. Fowler wins the battle, it's one touch there, now he has a look, sees the goalkeeper on his way, lifts it over quite exquisitely. Thomas. Phil Neville. Keen to the right-hand side and well forward. Locked by Bab. Now both Nevilles have the ability to throw the ball long. Had their first miss kick by Harkins. Now will that hurt Liverpool? Phil Neville's cross. Cantona! It looked on its way. What a strike. He was so quick to react to a great block from Neil Ruddock. A little bit more consistency now about Manchester United's attacking. Gary Neville. Cantona calling for it. The flag is up. What a goal it would have been. Neil Ruddock had other ideas. Well, he can't hit it any better. Watch the way he reacts. He goes up for the initial cross. Up the old goal. Now, look how quickly he's on to it. What a good block. Goalkeeper's in a good position. Might have been going straight at David James. But Ruddock didn't know that. And his job was to put his body there. Well, he's having a good look at Eric Cantona, but there's been no sign of any attempts to wind him up. Which is what happened here a year ago. Beckham. For 18, you have to marvel at the coolness of Philip Neville. 23 months younger than his brother. Cantona, characteristically. Beckham. Andy Cole's in, out comes the goalkeeper, Cole is round him, but not with the ball, it's a corner. Well, unlucky, but Beckham's had one or two runs now in that inside right channel, through the centre, and he's really played good telling passes, Cole finds himself in a bit of space, there's gaps there, and he gets a toe to it, and the goalkeeper does his job, fingertips, and it's a corner. dealt with it. Yes. Well, need to deal with it a second time. Safely enough. Throw. Chance to get it into the penalty area again. From a set play. Has to stay forward. Won't reach him. Antona. Not showing any signs of flagging. Here. McManaman galloping into the Green Acres on the far side. Redknapp. Hartness was yelling for it and he got it. Trying to work the one two with Rush. Thomas. Bruce quick to it twice. Cole trying to 
five foot, scales steady. Cantona. And he'll have the final touch. Well, James wasn't sure because he flung himself at it to try and prevent what he thought was a corner. It's not been given. No, the referee was in a good position to give this decision. He was almost in line with it. You can see that as the ball's just played in from Cantona. Look at the referee. Uh, Sandy Cole, yeah, just knocking it away for the corner. Bounced on by Thomas and by Rush. Fowler not running this time. Three quarters of the way through the game. McManaman. Rather gifted back to Manchester United by Fowler. Came off his heel rather than the side of the foot. Now Paul Scholes preparing. Ferguson again has gone for three outfield players on the bench. Paul Parker, as well as David Beckham, who of course came on for the second half. I thought this was Scales' his first game of the season in the first team. He's done his job in a straightforward manner. Oh, great feet from the back. Great skill. <laughs> Thomas. No wonder Terry Venables is looking at the core of this Liverpool side, perhaps to uh, build the England team around. With Panty pushing for places in the squad for the next match in Norway. David Ellery was a long way off the play so quickly and Manchester United swept it forward, but having turned down Liverpool, he answered the call for United here. Yeah, he doesn't get the ball. It's a great decision, I think, from the referee. The key area is, does he win the Giggs as it pushes it forward? He's up right away, Giggs. You can see that, and I think players' reactions are good ones. And who's going to take it? The player who took two in the FA Cup final awarded by David Ellery against Chelsea. I think there are some decisions, Matt, that can go one way or the other. That was a close call for the referee. A really close call. Liverpool will fight the bin down. It's a fairy story for the Frenchman. Liverpool will say with the help of the referee. It's a super cool finish, but should be a thought anything else would happen. Any other outcome than that? Stuck in. I'll tell you what made the difference, Mark. I think it was Philip Neville. I've talked about they hadn't won the ball high enough up the pitch. Now, in that case, I think it was Philip Neville, or maybe it was David Beckham, I think it was Beckham, run about the halfway line. He really put Liverpool under pressure. He won the ball, and from there, United broke very quickly. The key was the gigs run. The decision was a difficult one. Had it gone either way, I think we could have taken it. It was that close a call from the referee. He had to give an instant decision. He gave it. Now, Liverpool will think they've been denied twice. I think they've been denied once myself. Well, where do we go from here? Cantona has made one. Cantona has scored one. Robbie Fowler has struck twice for Liverpool. Giggs. United fans will have put together their own pre-game version of events here. The script that they would like to see unfold, and I guess it would include a winner by Cantona in the final minute. What do you mean you guess? <laughs> you know <laughs> it could happen. Beckham. Cantona lets it run brilliantly for Giggs. It's Andy Cole with the overhead. 
Well, that might just have taken over from Tony Yeboa. Is in my list of goals of the season so far. First to step over from Cantona. Watch this. Over it goes. A touch from Giggs. Now watch this. No rash shot for goal. He stands it up. Great execution of the overhead from Cole. And he's only what? About a foot or two away. Paul's goals has come on for Philip Neville. For that, a moment or two ago, was a sign, or an illustration rather, of what has been missing over the last eight months. Gary Neville. With the utmost respect to Blackburn and Everton, it's very easy to make a case that Manchester United would have done the double again had Cantona not gone over the top of Crystal Palace. No, which way is it going now? <laughs> ah, this is wonderful stuff. All well, the pulses are racing. One or two of the players are flagging and just grateful for the chance to draw breath as Michael dallied on the ball. And Manchester United are really going for it now, Martin. Basically, three defenders now playing. Gary Neville, Steve Bruce, Gary Pallister. Four in midfield, scores a little behind the front too. Ticking off for Thomas. It may just be that. It is. how well they played to this point. Any loss of belief in the last 15 minutes could be the loss of any return to those trip along the M62. Fowler. Now comes Keane. Beckham. Attracted to the same ball, Fowler plays it in a flick off Pallister ahead of behind by Steve Bruce, a corner to Liverpool. Well, it's so stretched, it's almost like a big five aside, and I feel like saying next goal the winner. <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you just feel sure. Well, whoever strikes now will surely go in and win the game. I'd be quite happy to play for the next goal as well. It's been great stuff. When they come here for Liverpool. Um, only their second corner. <laughs> Lofted high towards Ruddock, who won it against Pallister. McManaman, confident enough to bring it down and flick it to Thomas. Scales is in the thick of things. Ruddock on his left foot, too. Can hit them better than that. Thomas. Redknapp. Well, here's the penalty instant, Martin, and this is what I was talking about. So often Liverpool have been passing the ball across, across, under no great pressure. But look what happens here. They're passing, they're passing out. Watch Neville. In he goes, and he wins the ball high up the pitch. Now, watch Giggs' run from here. Now, it's Jamie Redknapp, who's really struggling to keep up with him. Giggs goes in, feels he's got the ball. I think he's been tugged back. Not only that, the referee's in a good spot to see it. He decides it's a penalty. I wouldn't argue with that decision. But two people made it possible. And I think that was it. Neville winning the tackle right on the halfway line. And then a smashing run from Ryan Giggs. Well, 
We talked about them wanting to play on the break, and they certainly did then. Diggs. Well, if one name dominated the pre-match talk, or oh, what, 24 players is it now? Played their part. It's been truly compelling. And it's still got 12 minutes or so to go. The one uh, thing that has been missing is the absence of Liverpool support. And I wish there had been a way for that to be possible today. Tried to do it himself. There was an easy ball back to Roy Keane. He's so anxious to get the ball wide to Beckham. And of course, Manchester United want to win it to augment Eric Cantona's return, but mostly they want to win it to take three points from traditional rivals to get. Back close to Newcastle, who beat Everton at Goodison Park today by three goals to one. If we do have an outright picture today, they will go second in the table. But it's 2 2 at the moment. But from Cantona penalty to set against two from Robbie Fowler for Liverpool. General behaviour has been beyond reproach. Oh, there's trouble here. I think he's going to get booked for well, what the referee considers wasting time. He didn't help by the fact that Scales went over to take it, put it down, and then Jason McIntyre felt sorry for him because no one came to show for him. And he had to wait. It was as simple as that. If he didn't, he was giving the ball away. Redknapp happy to get it forward. Fowler to keep Liverpool move away from David James's goal. Cole's touch for Cantona. A little bit of role reversal then. The flick had the look of the Frenchman about it, but it came the striker who's trying to do enough good work for Manchester United to get into the England setup. That looked theatrical. And I think I saw a smile on the lips of David Ellery as he turned away. You said earlier and David Ellery setting standards at Blackburn. Well, he obviously didn't see it, so he it. <laughs> Manager, and Manchester United hustling 
Liverpool out of their stride, and that's something that hasn't come easy for them today. They're going to regroup now. Fowler. McAteer. Ian Rush still waiting for his first goal of the season. Liverpool have spread the scoring around already, although Fowler has dominated it today. Which is encouraging for the manager. Eight different players already on target. McManaman. Now Thomas. Strong again against Gary Neville. Look in the end, three United defenders to stop him. Beckham. Here's Cole. The crowd urging United to give them the conclusion that they really want here. On a day they've waited for for so long, the 1st of October. Ringed in the diaries of United followers all over the world. Get that. It was close. It was close. I think he feels that Neil Ruddock had uh, a little bit more than just tracking him there. It's a good ball and a good run. A little bit less weight on it. Ah, Neil Ruddock's just seized him out of the play. He does like to plead his case, Eric, doesn't he? Yes, and it's all very well pleading it today. But the next two away games for Manchester United in the Premiership are at Chelsea and at Arsenal. Any pleading there might be uh, misconstrued, and I suppose students of his behaviour will be very much vigilant, hoping that Cantona doesn't become the vigilante he's tried to be so often taking the law into his own hands. I think it was, was it Roy Keane it was booked early on Martin mm -hmm. Lutak that tackle Roy did was no worse than the one we've just seen from David Beckham and whether it's reputation preceding him again uh, you know, sometimes think that does happen there's another Thomas Ball for Fowler and Bruce had the strength that Neville lacked earlier yeah they might not have Neville's pace but I think he would have learned even from that watching that and he made sure Steve Bruce that he, would, he was, wasn't going to be muscled out of that Gets the better of Redknapp. The duel that led to the penalty. Skulls, James, heads it with the uh, cap in place. That was a good decision in the end from the goalkeeper. It was a super run from Skulls. It's great, what I like about these two teams. No one's settling for a point. I don't think that's in any of their minds. Both desperately trying to win this game. I'm sure that Liverpool, as the away side, will be happier with the point. But even they are still trying to go forward and win this game. Yes, you have to look at the uh, swings of mood or the swings of the match. Liverpool so stunned early on. And then good value for leading 2-1. Their thoughts on the penalty, I'm sure we'll hear later on. Goals. Here's Key. Rush tracking back. McManaman for the umpteenth time. Tries to trigger something for Liverpool. McAteer. Red now. Oh, 
Paul Bruce. That was a little look towards his mate Gary Pallister, as if to say, what are you doing to me? Cantona. Oh, yeah. Scales was brave then. Can't blame Cole for going for the ball, but the foot was raised. Yeah, I think that one of the referees easier decisions today. Andy, we've talked about the perspective of the match, but just uh, for the season, we've seen Manchester United at times outplayed at home, had poor home results in the cup ties recently. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a case of the kids have done ever so well from the young players. And I think I'd said you can only, you know, 10, 12 games in, they might just begin to feel the pace. Now, that may be happening, it may have happened. And that's why it's important that the players like Cole and Keane are back from injury, Canton are back from suspension, and Alec can feel the more experienced and hopefully settled side from his point of view. A strong run from McAteer. Rush. Michael as well to pick out Cole. Got for Cantona. Oh, Harkness. He wasn't really uh, as alert as he might have been then against Beckham. Thomas tidies it up. Fowler, Andy, your thoughts on man of the match? Well, this is difficult, and it's difficult because there are a number of contenders, Martin. There's been a lot of games when I've had trouble picking a man of the match because there haven't been contenders. Just a whole shot there. Yeah. Liverpool are still trying to win the match. McManaman. Caught by Beckham. And Liverpool have got a decision here, but it's outside the penalty area. Marginally. I think Beckham's pleading his case that he didn't really tackle, and I think he's probably right. It was more that I think Steve McManaman kind of fell over, because over his feet rather than Beckham. Look, I mean, oh, he does hook it away. He's lucky it's just outside. Redknapp! Saw the gap. Schmeichel was setting the wall. The referee allowed the free kick to be taken. Schmeichel just about got there at the full extent of his dive. It's a corner. He's lining up the wall. You can see him. He's got to travel all the way across goal. Not sure whether it's sneaking in at this far post. But Schmeichel doesn't know that. He gets a very faint finger to it. I'll tell you my man of the match after this corner, man. Just taken by Redknapp. Scales can't get there and he's been nice. The floor is yours, Andy. Well, as I say, there have been a number of very good performances, but I'm going to give it to a young man who's... Hang on, hang on, there's a problem here. It's Thomas has uh, kicked the ball away. Yeah, he's been booked. I'm going to give it to a young man who's, well, he's red-hot goal scoring at the moment, and he's got two today. And that's Liverpool's Robbie Fowler. The fouling man of the match. Here's Fowler with two more to his tally. And Liverpool still hunting goal number three in stoppage time. Another trebled chance team Liverpool they haven't had a draw this season but it is a draw today a day which will go down in the annals at Old Trafford the day the hero returned and he did so with a goal from the penalty spot 20 minutes from time that gave Manchester United something from a game which looked so good for them when Cantona's cross was converted by Nicky Butt in the second minute but Robbie Fowler made it very difficult for Alec Ferguson and his team. The two crackers for Liverpool. A draw in these circumstances, perhaps they will feel an achievement. But there were times in the game when they played with such control and such promise that they might feel disappointed. But the overall feeling for Manchester United is that they can look forward now with a Frenchman back to fuel their fight for the championship. He says they've got to do the double again. That's what he wants. It's a lot of work to do. But it's been a satisfying day for him. And in the end, a satisfactory one, perhaps, for all concerned. I think so. I think for either side to have lost that game now, Mark, with, with, well, 
I think they would both have felt that uh, they deserve something from the game, and I think that's right, and I think a sheer share of the spoils just about right, in my opinion. Well, it's been a very good day for Newcastle United, who would be happy for this one to finish level. Two rivals get one point apiece. Newcastle with three in the bank for winning at Everton earlier in the day. It's been a fantastic day, and it's been a pleasure to play a part in bringing it to you on Sky Sports. Robbie, very well played. Did Liverpool go out there extra de determined because of all the publicity about Eric Cantona returning? Yeah, I think so. I mean, all week, all the time I've been in the papers about Eric Cantona's coming back in that. So um, we've just, um, we're, we were pleased with that because um, we know what we're capable of anyway. So with um, everyone focused on Cantona, we were, um, I thought we played really well today. So I mean, 67 seconds into the game when you were one goal down, what was going through the, the side then? Um, I don't know. It was, um, I don't know really what happened to be honest, but um, no, we've clawed ourselves back in, into the game and we've won in front. And um, really, um, oh, I thought we could have had more of the game, really. Well, that's right. You certainly started dominating as the first half wore on. Tell us about your first goal. How pleased were you with that? I think it was Macha Mach 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 played us through, and I, uh, I've had a touch. And uh, I've seen um, Schmeichel, he's, I think he's gone out towards the far post, so I've just whacked it with my left foot, and it's just, it's just gone in, really. So. You could see the gap, could you, that Peter Schmeichel left? Yeah. <laughs> it was a terrific strike following on from four last week, and then you went and scored a second goal. Now, that really was a special finish, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was Michael Thomas who played it through, and I uh, yes. managed to get in front of Gary Neville. I've, um, I've used all my strength, <laughs> what a little bit I've got, and I've, I think Peter Schmeichel, he, he slipped as he came out, so I just sort of lifted it over him, and that... That was a great finish. I was pleased with it anyway, so. The two penalty decisions that were turned down, did you get a good view of either of those? Well, I think I was involved in one of them, so uh, I thought the one um, with me, I thought it was a definite, definite penalty. Because, anyway, I mean, if I've got you know, a clear shot at goal, there's no way I'm going to dive or go down. So, I mean, for me, he's pulled me back, and you know, I thought it was a definite penalty. And the one with the um, second one with Macha, I thought that was a penalty as well. So, um, unfortunately, we never got any of them, so they go down the other end. And, so they um, a break and then they get a penalty, so... As a forward, how careful have you got to be not to dive in the area, do you think, this season when, when we saw Roy King get sent off early on for doing something yeah, like that? That says it all, really. I mean, you've got to go... Um, I mean, especially a forward. If a forward has got um, sort of a, a clear shooting chance of goal, I mean, there's no way he'll, he'll go down or dive or anything like that. I mean, he'd really want to score before he goes down and that, so... I mean, it's stupid if you go down and if they dive anyway, so... I think they deserve all they get if they go down for they dive and that. Listen, well played today. The Carling man of the match, two great goals. Thanks. Well done. Thank you very much, Robbie. Well, Roy, a terrific Liverpool performance, but from your point of view, was that two points lost rather than one gained? Well, uh, we're absolutely sick about it. And the lads have worked really hard out there. Don't think we started too well. I think we were a bit jittery. Uh, but after 15 minutes, we've controlled the game until the end. Um, it's supposed to be the Eric Cantona show today. Um, but when the referee writes in the paper that the spotlight's on him and Eric Cantona, um, and that's how it was today. All the referee has to do is make the right decisions. I don't think he's done that today. You feel clearly that you should have had some penalties then? Well, I feel we should have had some penalties, and I don't think that the one they got was a penalty. We feel that uh, Jamie Redknapp skipped the ball. But Well, here's the first one. This is uh, Steve Bruce and Robbie Fowler. Yeah, he's had a tug at him, and uh, Robbie's gone down. He's through. Um, he doesn't give it. That's, I can't change the referee's decisions. I just think they're wrong. Robbie Fowler, we asked him, he said much the same thing. He said, there's no way I would dive in a situation like that because of the fear of getting sent off. Well, he doesn't need to dive, Robbie. He's in a position where he might score a goal, and that's the most important thing to him. Having said that, the way you came back from being a, a goal down early on and, and took charge of the game, how satisfying was that from your point of view? Well, very satisfying. As I say, I don't think we went out with, with great self-belief at first. You know, we came here with no supporters, um, which is difficult. Um, all the hoo-ha this week about Eric, um, we were not supposed to turn up, I don't think. Um, <laughs> And in the end of the day, we've, we've, we've turned it round, we've got ahead, and, uh, and in the end, I think uh, we've been um, lost two points because of, a, um, I think, a, a dodgy decision. Were you, in a way, able to fire up your players because of all the hype that was surrounding Eric Cantona and the lead-up to this game? Well, we try to be sensible about it because, again, it's, uh, I've always said that the game, uh, Man United vs Liverpool, is bigger than Eric Cantona or, or anybody. Um, we've come here, we've had some great games with them, um, and believe it or not, between our, the people in the back room, we have a great relationship uh, with each other. But um, I just thought at the end of the day that the hype all week has probably worked a little bit against us, uh, certainly in the early part of the game. Um, but uh, two to form, the lads have turned it round and uh, fantastic in the end. 
Well, there were two possible penalties that you obviously feel you had. I, th I think we can show you the second one now. Here we go. Well, oh, James got. A hey, James kicked the ball. Didn't he? Hey, James kicked the ball. Simple as that. But that's not against us. So I can't see the penalty there. That's right. OK, um, but overall, I mean, presumably you're going to take a lot of heart from a performance like I this, though, aren't you? I take heart from the performance of the lads. As I say, I'm sick for them. Um, I'm obviously a little bit angry as well, um, but they're the ones who have lost out today. They deserve more than they got. All right, Roy. Thank you very much thank you. indeed. Well done. Yeah. Well, Alex, after months and months of waiting, how did you uh, assess the return of Eric Cantona? Well, I thought he did well. Yeah, I thought he did well. Obviously tired near the end, but that was to be expected. And it's uh, all at the road now. All the hype's finished, thank goodness. I don't think it did any, either team any good today, all the hype. Uh, but then they did. They've still produced a, a marvellously entertaining match. Do you wonder sometimes who writes his scripts when 60 seconds into the game he makes the first goal? Well, he's capable of that at any part, point of the game. We've got a good start, to be honest with you. I thought we relaxed after that. I thought that we gave Liverpool the initiative. They played terrific possession football. They had us chasing all about the pitch for the, the remainder, well, from the last half hour of the first half. They've got a terrific start in the second half. We thought it was a foul. Liverpool claimed for a penalty the first half. We thought it should be a foul against Gary Neville by Fowler. That was disappointing, but you have to overcome these things. And it was clearly, and I've watched on television now, it was clear penalty kick as far as we were concerned when Ryan Gaines was pulled back. But in a game, was so much football, it's a tragedy of so many bookings. And I can't believe the number of bookings. There was hardly, I don't think it was a bad field the whole match. But a tremendous interesting game. Was there any hesitation on your part in, in, in letting Eric take the penalty in that situation when he hasn't had a competitive game for months and months? You must be joking. <laughs> no, no. Terrific penalty there, wasn't it? Sent the keeper the wrong way. Well, he's, he's an expert at, at that particular thing, you know. He's, he looks at the goalkeeper and... He'll play, play the opposite side, you know. But um, after that, we, we looked as if we were a team, maybe we could have won it. And yet, in the last minute, Liverpool, very unlucky, a quick free kick by Redknapp, and Peter Schmeichel's a fabulous save. It was that type of game at Seesaw in the whole second half. I thought we marginal, I thought we were the better side in the second half, particularly the last 25 minutes. Uh, we made a substitution of schools to try and win the match because draws are not what we want at Old Trafford. Now that he's back and you've got Andy Cole fit again, do you feel all, all the pieces of the jigsaw are starting to fall back into place for you? Well, we, we're getting better. Roy Keane needed a, he needs a bit of training now and he needs a game. He tired towards the end, Roy, today. Understandably, Eric's tired. So we're finishing a game with you know, players who are very tired players. But they will get better. Eric will get better as the game's going. and maybe in three or four game, weeks maybe feel the effects of coming back after being out so long. But that's something we'll handle. And um, I'm looking forward to trying to get the right partnership because I think Scholes has got a lot for our team. He's got a lot to, to provide for us. He's a tremendous football brain. He's a good finisher. And he comes into my thinking now. All right, Alex, thanks for talking to us. Thank well you. done today. Thank you.